Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday and welcome to February. January is such a slog to get through. I'm always happy to get to February. We made it. Yes. I know. Uh, Onward. Okay, this week in the, in the studio, it's been all about the new Kickstarter that will launch this month, the really complete Paradise 2. Yes. Yay, Terry's been working so hard on the covers, the interiors, and uh, getting gathering up new images to put in the book. So mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be about 340 pages. And I think you'll love it. So keep an eye out for that. I'm sure you will be posting a lot on social media yes. this time. Yeah, because it's all I'm doing right now. Yeah. Okay. And the Strangers in Paradise Volume 3 hardcovers were delivered Friday and will begin shipping pre-orders this week. This is the only place you can get the hardcovers. So if you want it, if you want it, just go to the website and place your order. $38.99, I believe. And uh, we'll ship it out to you. I saw it. It looks really good. I haven't seen it yet. Totally matches the other two. Hey, nice. Yeah, it's like, as that if somebody kind planned of a plan. it. <laughs> and don't forget about Terry Moore Live coming up in April. Lots of sketches, original art, including pages from the first and last issues of the series that have never been seen before, Ooh. or offered before, I should say. Books will be on sale, and we'll have some hidden treasures as well. So nice. keep that in mind for April. We actually haven't set a date yet for that. We need to do that. Mm -mm. Um, this is going to be a really good one. So oh, um, yeah. more to come on that topic later. Yes. And I've actually been working on uh, new sketches for that as well. We like to have a batch of sketches. Yes, we do. Well, I do. <laughs> Robin does. But okay. I like having them. So that's all I have. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Um, You've got it's your post-it notes right there. Yeah, I've got all my, these are my tech notes, technical specs. One big thing we might mention right now is that we are changing the format from the comic book format to the eight and a half by 11 format that we used for Turn More After Dark. Turn More After Dark. So if you see the difference in the formats right there, this one's a little more friendly to the horizontal strips. Okay. So it worked out to be a really good idea. Robin thought of it first. I wasn't that bold. So I've been converting things to the new format. Okay, let's get on the hot seat. Okay. Okay, this is from our friend Todd Ferguson. Who? Never heard of him. How does Terry pick his other projects? Doing Kickstarter covers or illustrations in different books, writing Lady Supreme? Is it the paycheck or just because they're friends or someone he really likes in the industry, etc.? What makes him decide to sign on to, to something that isn't his IP? That's a good question, Todd. Well, it is. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Lady Supreme because it's uh, famously embarrassing. I love it. Just go right through it then. Yeah. Uh, Todd, we're going to pretend you didn't say that. We're going to pretend you didn't even say that one. You, but after that, I picked. I only picked uh, things that I really wanted to work on. Things that um, I love the character or I love the book. Or I love the, the idea. The person making it. Um, those are those are the criteria. If if you don't have your heart into it, it's going to show in the work. Uh, art and, and writing are so um, they're so emotional. They come from an emotional place. So if you pick projects that touch your heart, it's going to show in your work. That's how I do it. Okay. Well, that was very succinct. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's uh, that's it, it for me. If you can't pick from the heart in, in the in the arts. Oh, you are finished. Sorry. <laughs> I just thought of a coda. <laughs> if you can't pick from the heart with the arts, I mean, then all is lost. You know. All is lost. It's not, oh my gosh. It's not a business decision. I mean, it's not the way Warren Buffett would pick a project. Yeah. Uh, so, but. This... Well, you you really have very little time to do those extra projects until now. Yeah. And uh, so you were very particular about what you had time to squeeze into your schedule. Mm -hmm. So so if I picked it, I loved it. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you finished? Come on. Uh, yeah. Think about it. <laughs> okay, well, what are you drawing today? Uh, actually, I am putting a book together. And what I did was um, I put the camera on um, earlier um, and showed how I was going through these cover layouts. So I had like um, the soft cover, 
and then a hardcover exclusive. And then this is the one that I, I had a problem with. I drew this to one size ratio, but we changed to the bigger ratio and I suddenly needed this to be more spread out. And I had to get in with my Wacom pen and tablet and separate some of these characters and get it all laid out according to the new format. Um, and it's a really tricky thing to do, uh, not only for the technical side, but also just to get an aesthetic that you like, so a cover that you're proud of. Um, so I ran the camera during the process and you can watch me do that if you like. Um, so yeah, join me here. <laughs> the challenge on the new cover is that I drew a, a new cover image. The original one had um, my characters chasing me. The new cover has me chasing my characters. Well, I drew it for this format, and this is basically the comic book format. Very vertical, um, 6.875 by 10.438 uh, is what it is. And we decided that that that's not a friend. That's not friendly to comic strips. You have to reduce a comic strip a lot to get it to fit between there to there. It's this is so vertical. Comic strips are horizontal. Um, so we decided uh, a couple of days ago to change it to the same format that I used for um, After Dark, which is eight and a half by eleven. And look at how much more horizontal space there is in this ratio. So the comic book ratio. And then the eight and a half by 11. So I prefer this. So I had the whole book made in this format. I'm now converting it to this plus putting in new material. That's my challenge for right now. When I took my original drawing that I had made in the comic book format for the double page spread cover, I found that, um, I had a problem with faces being on the spine, cut off by the spine. So you have part of the image here in the front and then you on the part on the back. And in the middle is going to be this spine that's almost a, an inch wide. Well, I when I had drawn this, I didn't mark off where the spine was going to be on my drawing. So when I laid it on to the, on the, to the template here, I've got too many faces that are cut off. So, and if I move them over to where they're clear of the spine, there's nothing on the front cover except me. I've got a problem. <laughs> now, this is ironic because last week or two weeks ago, I did a video on how to draw a group photo without making mistakes. And the answer was to use the animator trick of just draw them all individually, then composite them together in your digital um, world <laughs> and then you can put them wherever you want that's brilliant advice if you're going to do a jam piece or a big collective crowd piece and you want everybody to be just drawn perfect and you don't want to have to keep erasing and blah 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 i wish i had done that for this job <laughs> i did not i drew one big jam piece and i just drew it on here <laughs> exactly what i advised you not to do two weeks ago well so I end up with this gorgeous, you know, original. Okay, cool. Um, now I need to put it into the, onto the real book. And when I do that, this spine is always on somebody's face, always. Not smart. I should have done, taken my advice, made these things individually, and then positioned them on the layout to where everybody looked great and in the right place. I did not do that. So what I'm doing now is what I wanted to show you. Uh, now what I'm having to do is go into the digital composite file that was already colored and it's, a, it's flattened, it's one piece, it's, it is what it is. Now what I have to do is go in and with my Wacom, draw in, separate the characters, spread them out, and then go back in with, with my pen on Photoshop and redraw the missing spots and put the color back in. I'm not gonna send this, I'm not gonna remove all these guys and then send my hacked up piece back to my colorist Steve and ask him to fix all that coloring. Um, it's crazy, it's my fault. I sh this is just mostly flats and, and basic fades anyway. I can just, I just do it. 
So yeah, the part of part of my penitence is I had to fix my own mess. So I'm I'm on Photoshop on my old Mac here. This this is like a 2012 Mac and it still works. Um, and I'm separating out the characters. And what I've been doing is I'll okay. Let me switch to the screen mode here. Okay, so you can watch this. By the way, how did you like? I keep the old um, westerns on the TV on, it's Saturday, and on Saturday afternoon they play all those old American westerns on TV all day. I've already, as you can see, all these blank spaces in here. This is where I've been separating the art um, and moving these characters around. Here's the original. You can see from things like, I've moved the baby carriages and all these critters down on here below to get spaced out. Um, I've moved Vic. I've moved this guy over a little bit. I grabbed her. She was actually over here on top of um, Plato the polar bear. I moved her over here already because I then in that body moving up like that, she was underneath the title and that screwed up the title. Um, in my original, if I just lay the photo in as is, um, this is where the spine was happening right here. And um, that's not okay. It looked like all I had on the cover was basically, all I had on the cover was that. So that's not cool, right? Um, so I've moved these guys over, scrunched them in. I separated me and I'm a, I'm a totally different um, figure here. I can move myself wherever. So I'm gonna make myself back there probably as big as I can, that's probably it. And then you see these layers here that I have, that's all these individual groups. Um, like I have this group here all by itself. It's okay to put Francine's full face on the spine. That's a good spine, that's okay. Um, but now I have all this on the front, all that on the back. Um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I've been spreading this out, and then I will go take it over to InDesign, to the real layout here, <clears throat> and then I check it on there. So let me save what I have here. Let's go to InDesign, where I'm doing the layout. This is Adobe InDesign, and drop in the, that's it, drop it in. And I'm working in layers here, so we need to get that underneath the titles. There. It's a work in progress, y'all. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Okay, so it's a couple of hours later, and I'm doing the very last thing, I believe, which is fixing um, Zoe's axe, finishing Zoe's axe. And then I think I'm going to be ready to take a look at this and see if it fits. I am doing this the absolutely coloring 101 way, which is I'm actually coloring right on the art. Um, the only layers I have is some of the characters are separated, but I'm not even bothering with, okay, a line a line layer and then a color layer underneath. I am coloring straight on the art. That's as basic as it gets. <laughs> um, I cleaned up all of the guys in the background there. Like, you know, I finished out the gorilla and the dinosaur, uh, even though they're hidden. I needed to, I needed them to be in every little peekaboo place that they would be. Um, I finished out the, uh, Kixie's trail and made it start at the pencil. I think that's I think that's fun. And I added some little drop shadows underneath the, uh, everybody there. There, I think I think that's the set, I think that's the layout that I'm looking for. I actually have two two mice in here. Um, have you seen them? There's a mouse here on the Mini Cooper, and then there's a mouse over here in Aunt Libby's pocket. Okay, well let's save this and then go to InDesign, the layout, and there was the previous one. Drop it in here, new cover, revise layout. 
and let it settle and let's see what we have. It works. <laughs> it works. Finally. I think that's our cover. Everybody is spread out. Uh, the graphics are in the clear. Um, name, abstract studio, it's all in the clear. Uh, okay, well that's one way to make a cover. Absolutely the hardest way possible to make a cover. But I wanted to save this art, not have to draw all new art and color it again. And by going in with Photoshop and dividing, separating the characters more, and then me being the artist, finishing all the gaps that I left in the art when I cut and spread. Um, it took me a couple hours to do that, but it was worth it. And um, it looks clean to me. Um, and now I have a good looking spine, a good looking front cover, and a good looking back cover. I think we're ready. I think Robin's will approve and I'll be able to send this off to Pat and get it up on Kickstarter. And this is going to be the image that you see uh, for the cover on Kickstarter real soon.